One of the members on my website, Robert, posted a comment regarding frequency separation, asking if anybody else used it. Took a look and thought, yeah, okay, high-end studio stuff, that sort of thing. Then Robert posted a before and after of one of his uh, friends or relatives, and I thought, that looks really good. Did a little bit more digging, and I think what was the, the icing on the cake, there's a new piece of software for photo editing for Max and that has frequency separation actually built into it so I thought there's got to be a lot more to it. It is not my picture, it's being used under the Flickr Creative Commons, I will put full details on this as well so you can see who took this fantastic picture. Frequency separation, what is it? Well if we come over to the layers panel I'm going to use Command J Control J once, Command J Control J again. Now to layer one I'm going to double click on this and I'm going to call this tones because basically what we're doing is we're separating the tones to this layer here which is going to be the textures, right? And this is going to be the skin texture, this is going to be the tonal range on the skin itself. First of all let's come to tones going to switch textures off, we're going to go to filter, I'm going to go to blur, we're going to go to Gaussian blur and we're going to blur it by not that amount, I'm going to reduce this back, we're going to take it up so we can just see the, the detail but we're going to soften the skin off something perhaps just a little bit more, that area there should be pretty good, right like the way that's looking so you can still see all the main features but we've just blurred this down, I'm going to click OK to that we're going to click on the texture layer, I'm going to switch this on so this is now visible. Now with this layer we're going to go to image, we're going to go down to apply image and what we need to do with this is where we've got layer we're going to click on this, we're going to go down to our tones, so we're going to be using the layer for the tones, we're going to change the blend mode from multiply, we're going to go down to add and there's one important thing we need to do with this, where it says scale make sure that says 2 everything else, the opacity, all of these are unchecked. We are going to put a little tick in the invert, so it's now changed it to this, and we're going to click OK. Over to the layers panel, we're going to change the blend mode from normal, we're going to go down to linear lights, changing it to linear lights, we can now see the image again. The top layer, the texture layer is highlighted, I'm going to bring my cursor down to where it says tones, I'm going to press command or control, so pressing command or control, clicking down, both are now highlighted, now using Command G or Control G, that's Command G, Control G is going to group this into one folder. And as we switch this on and off, you'll notice there's no difference, well, very little difference. And that's because tones, textures added together, what have we got? We've got the original picture. Right, for the next stage, this is where we're now going to use the, uh, yeah, the frequency I tell you what, that frequency separation is such a big word, isn't it? Whereas well, really it's tone and texture separation. That's what we're actually doing with this. And it's going to allow us to work on the tones and textures separately. Now that we're all set up, let's take a look at using it. We're going to start off by working on the tones. So I'm going to click on this layer here. We're now working on the tones. We're going to come over to the toolbox. I'm going to press L, which is going to give me the lasso tool. It's the freehand lasso. And up at the top here, I've got the single selection. So that's the new selection. Just notice I've got a feather. So I'm going to come over to the lasso itself. I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to Reset Tool, which just drops that down to zero pixels. The reason for doing that, yes I want to feather it, but I want to make sure I get the right amount of feather. I'm just going to draw a very rough selection around this area. I'm now going to press Q on the keyboard, and you can see it's a very hard edge. If we go to Filter, Blur, if we go down to Gaussian Blur, we can take a look at this, and I'm going to move it up just a little bit more. But we got 27, 27.5, going to click cancel for that, going to press Q again to bring back our selection, command D or control D to deselect. I'm now going to take the feather up to that amount we had which was 27.5, that looks pretty good, ok 27.6, going to click down, drag it around this area, something like this, and uh, yeah that looks pretty good. I'm going to use spacebar and command or control, so we're just going to zoom into this area here, now that we've done that, if we just take a look, filter, Gaussian blur, command F, control F, this is the last filter we used, I want to bring it back, but I also want to see the amount that we've got. Now there's a very useful shortcut, if you use command, option and F, that's command, option F, it is control, 
Alt and F, so putting Alt or Option into the equation, it brings it back. This allows us then to make any adjustments. And if I just drop this down, that's the skin tone we're starting off with. And as we start to increase the blur, look at the way we can just blend that in. Absolutely fantastic. I'm going to press Enter or Return to apply that. Don't forget we've got the single selection, so I'm going to come around this area. Something like that would be pretty good. Once again, Command Option F, Control Alt F brings it back. We can take a look. Perhaps you want to take that up a little bit more. No, just dropping it back into that area. I'm going to press Enter or Return to apply it. Now around this part, something like that. Looks pretty good. And we're going to work our way around the whole face, just doing that, just dropping it down a little bit. Don't forget, I'm using that shortcut, which makes life a lot quicker and easier around this part of the eye while we're working around this part. And using that shortcut again, which... Uh, yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's try a little bit more. Click OK to that. Around this part. I'm not going to go right up to the hair. Don't forget it is feathered as well, but I'm not going right up to the hair. Just going to blend that in, taking that up a little bit higher, which will just darken it down very slightly. I'm going to click OK to that. Looking good so far. Around this area here. And just going to use that shortcut once again. Yeah, I like the way that's looking. Pressing Enter or Return. Now around the bridge of the nose and the top of the nose, something like that. And that shortcut, just going to take this up into that area and down around this part. Well, you can see where I'm working, can't you? Yeah, around we go. You can see some skin blemishes there. We'll have a look at tackling those in just a moment. But I'm just going to work a little bit more on this. Around that part of our nose would be pretty good. And just using that shortcut once again. I think this is absolutely fantastic. I just love the effect. It's very much, I suppose, I sp you could call it Mac makeup, couldn't you, in some respects? Not unless you're using a PC, but you know what I mean. Right, clicking OK to that. Well, you don't if uh, you don't know what Mac makeup is. Right, but around this area, and again, this is just going to highlight. In fact, I'm going to bring it in. I've just noticed we've got a hair coming through. I'm going to show you a little trick we can use around that in a second. Look at the slight blotchiness we've got there. Right, Command, Option, and F. Control, Alt, and F. This is really, yeah, look at that. It's a fantastic illustration of how that's working. Take it up a little bit more, dropping it down into that area. Press Enter or Return. Click OK. Command, D, Control, D. Switching it on and off. Look what we've done to the image. Absolutely fantastic. Now, there's another little trick. I'm still working on the tone layer here, but if you want to brighten an area up, something like this area here, if you press B on the keyboard, that's going to give you the brush tool. I've dropped the opacity down to 20%. The flow rate I'm going to take down to 20% as well. I'm using the normal blend mode, but what we're going to do is we're going to pick up pixels from this part, and we're going to paint them down around that part, just brightening things up. Clicking down. Pressing down, notice the foreground colour will change. And you can see that's this colour we've now got. Just going to paint over that area. Just make some new little samples around this area here. And it just helps to brighten up that part, blending it in now around this area as well. Just painting that over. And as we start to do this, we can just brighten it up. Just removing that redness as well from around this part of our nose or model's nose, more correctly speaking, that is, and up around there. Switching it on and off, toggle it back and forth, you can see the difference that's making to the image looking pretty good so far. Right, I'm going to press L on the keyboard, that's going to take me back. Don't forget, we have still got our feather around this area here. I'm just going to make a selection around that part. That's looking good like that, using Command, Option F, Control, Alt F, Bringing it in, yeah, we got a radius of 20. How's that working? Just going to drop it back a little bit, I think. It was just a bit strong there at 20. Pressing Enter or Return. Now around that area there would be pretty good. Once again, Command F, Control F, just pressing Enter or Return. So you can see you can actually start working quite quickly once you get into the swing of things. And, uh, yep, that looks pretty good like that. Right. Just gonna come, I'm just going to do the one side of the face, you'll be relieved to hear, and round that part, and using that useful shortcuts, and down round here. I'm going to brighten up this area here, just where the lip is, just to give a little bit more 
light under there. We'll do that in just a second. That looks pretty good. Using Command D, Control D, pressing B on the keyboard to bring up the brush tool. We're going to select pixels or the tone of the pixels from here and just paint that over like that, just brightening up underneath this area. Yeah, that looks better like that. These very slight differences, which are all going to come together and just help to, uh, yeah, improve the picture. Let's take a look at some of the ble skin blemishes themselves. Now, for that, we're going to work on the texture layer. I'm going to come over to Toolbox. I'm going to press J, which is going to give me the spot healing brush, which is this one here. There it is, the spot healing brush. Now, the one thing, when you're using the spot healing brush or you're using the, the clone stamp tool, any of that, you need to switch off sample all layers. You need it to be on the current layer only. Now, that is important, so make sure you're using the current layer only. I've also got content aware, and I'm just going to click down and over some of these areas like this, and we can just come around our picture, and that's just going to remove some of these little bits and pieces that we've got around here. Oh, remember I said that here? Let's zoom in closer using spacebar and command or control. And I'm just going to go around that, just bringing this hair in a little bit over there. That looks better like that. And a little bit of redness there, just some of these little marks around here. I think it's just the makeup that looks good good like that. Right, so let's just press spacebar to come around this part of our image. I'm going to press L on the keyboard to give me back the lasso tool. I'm going to make sure we're working on the tones layer. I'm just going to come around this part of the image here. Something like that would be pretty good. Right, using that shortcut, which is Command Option F, Control Alt F brings up the, uh, yeah, the Gaussian blur. And we're just going to blur that a little bit more into that area, click OK, and you can see the way these amounts are varying by quite a large degree. Coming back to our texture layer, he says try not to remove it, pressing that J on the keyboard to give us the spot removal brush. Just going to click over this area, so we've got a selection using Command D, Control D, just while I spotted that, and we can just come over that area, that looks pretty good. You can remove any stray hairs as well. Don't forget, you can also use the clone stamp tools, whichever one you're comfortable working with, give that a try as well. Perhaps that eyelash there, just bringing that in a little bit into that area, dropping the size of the brush right the way down and just coming over some of the finer hairs. You might want to do that as well, but it's entirely up to you. Right, just going to do this one part of the forehead here. So I'm going to press uh, L on the keyboard to give me the lasso tool, click on the tones layer, and I'm just going to do a selection around this part of our image using Command Option F, Control Alt F. Let's bring this up. Let's take a look, see how that's working with this. And let's just drop that down a touch or two into that area. Going to click OK to that. Now around this part of our image here. It's always a good idea to break it down into chunks rather than doing huge selections with this. And take a look, see how that's working. And just moving that back and forth a little bit. And you can see the way the textures remain completely intact with this. Absolutely fantastic. That's what I like about this technique. As I say, I was uh, a little bit sceptical when I first heard about it. But actually using it, you think, wow. Right, around that area. And I'm going to click OK to that. Command D, Control D, Command 0, Control 0 to go to fit on screen. Let's take a look. Don't forget, I've only done the one side of the face and look at the difference that makes to the image. Absolutely fantastic. One thing I would recommend is click on the group, fold it up, and I'm just going to drop the opacity down into this area. So just blend it in a little bit more. Right, just one more thing. I'm going to come back to tones. I'm going to zoom in to the earring area here. That shadow there, just a little bit distracting. I'm going to press B on the keyboard. We're going to pick the pixels up from this area here, and I'm just going to paint it over just to brighten up that. Just remove the distraction of that shadow around this part. And again, it just shows the flexibility that we actually have. So try brushes. Try the clone stamp tool. Try the spot healing brush. Try whatever you're comfortable working with. But the results can be really dramatic. There's the before. There's the after. Go on, give it a try. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please subscribe as well. And don't forget, experiment with the different tools. Have a lot of fun with it. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.